Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. The Authority Syndicate, the show for positioning yourself as the number one authority in your industry, quickly turning your prospects into clients and raving fans. Here is your host, T. Allen Haynes. Welcome back to the show. We've got a great guest for you today. We've got Jennifer Baker, and she is a servant-driven leader helping businesses, executives, organizations, and politicians operate based on their values, purpose, authenticity, emotional intelligence, accountability, and balance through her consulting, seminars, webinars, shows, and training programs. Recently, Jennifer was selected as one of America's premier experts and spends her time speaking, training, and supporting tens of thousands of companies that range from solopreneurs and home-based businesses to Fortune 100 companies worldwide. An author, talk show creator, and host, radio host, streaming worldwide, business and political consultant, professional speaker, trainer, certified digital marketer, An expert in online marketing, Jennifer is also one of the top-ranked master certified authorized expert solution providers and speakers with constant contact. Jennifer, welcome to the show. (laughs) That is a mouthful. (laughs) Do I know that woman? (laughs) That's amazing. Sounds great. Can I hire her? (laughs) There you go. Absolutely. So, Thanks for having me on the show, Tracy. What, a, what an honor to be here with you. I, just getting to know you has been just such a pleasure. You're an amazing man and have done some really incredible things yourself. Well, thank you. My face is turning red, but yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. So let's get right into it. Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing and what types of clients that you're helping. Oh, wow. What am I doing? So we just finished with a couple of different seminar training programs we're setting up for future events together. I'm excited about finally in my business collaborating with others that are sort of playing at the same level I am. For many years, I've been consulting on my own and looked for a lot of different partnerships. And over the years, you know, you're always searching for other people that you can collaborate with and work with. I guess I should say I have been. Other people um, are always afraid to share their knowledge because they want to hold on to what they've got. I have a belief system that there's no such thing as competition out there if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and doing it well. The right people just gravitationally come to you. And so through my years, I've looked for partnerships and people to come do work with me. And finally, this last year, I think I broke the mold of being just by myself and doing these seminars and speaking engagements alone. And I've really found and tapped into a really great community of people that I feel like are really playing at the same level I am. And I'm excited to start working with many of them this next year. That's something new that I've been working on. I'm excited to get out and expand my knowledge through some of these seminars as well because I think that we're always uh, we're always looking for ways to grow. So that's something new for me. I um, just became an, a national best-selling author, and some of my clients that I work with have had a little fun with that best-selling author title because my political clients, we, we have a pretty strong political climate going on <laughs> lately. And right. the, at the same time as being some pretty hardcore conversations in the political field, I was doing a motivational book and telling stories about my personal life. And at the same time in my personal life, I had some other family things happening. So it's been a, this whole year has been just a really strange, um, I think I used the word a little while ago, but almost like an overload of, of sensory in, in my life on all levels, which I think is what causes transition for a person. So I'm excited. I'm going to pretty strong transition points right now. And looking at my year ahead, things are pretty exciting. Awesome. You have an interesting background of the types of people that you're coaching and helping. So describe those people to the audience exactly who you're helping. I don't like to name drop, but I will tell you some different industries if that's okay. Um, I'm not a big fan of of sharing client knowledge and, and 
putting out there who my clients are. However, yeah. I do work with, uh, on the political side, I work with candidates and elected officials at every level of politics you can think of, from judges to city council people to commissioners, school board people, all the way to United States senators and, yes, presidential candidates. So it's, it's not really a niche that I have as for which level but it's more about the right type of person that I'm looking for to represent communities that I know um, are necessary. So you meet a really great person and you say, wow, you should be sharing your knowledge in this position. And it really does come down to the type of person and their character values, their, their core values that they operate off of, or their knowledge of an industry or of the community. Oftentimes, I'll help try to find people like that. So we have real people representing us. And if you can't find them, then you at least find the ones that have been elected to that position and help them sort of pull from the people in the community that they need to know and have them as resources. I think that's really important to our climate. The world has changed in politics, and I think that it's becoming more of an authentic representation of what we want out of our, out of our representatives than it ever has been because of the digital age and being able to research anybody we want at any time, and we're not just relying on, you know, the typical media to get information. Today, we can go out and research and find, find lots of things, including, you know, who people are, their core values, their families, their um, knowledge in business, etc. So um, that part is my political world. In my business world, I do a lot of work with different associations, organizations. You know, I work with several uh, dental associations across the nation, um, legal associations. I will work with nonprofit organizations. And I'm really, you know, and then down to the core of just private business for small businesses. That's where my passion is. But these associations and programs are typically along the lines of emotional intelligence and helping people with conflict resolution, um, leadership. Leadership is, is key to everything. It actually creates or helps conflict resolution more often. Mm-hmm. But um, I do a lot with DISC and emotional intelligence in most of my programs because I find that it's usually the human capital that's struggling. It's not really the tools so much in a business. Um, you know, it's been said that 90% of the success that's available to a, a professional today came from their ability to relate to others effectively. And I believe that. So my goal is to help keep as many people employed as we can by, one, helping them learn to collaborate better and work together and get along better. And then after that, the hard study, you know, the actual practical hands-on training can begin. But first, what's been missing in our education system and is missing in our workforce is that ability to collaborate and work together effectively. So I do a lot with those. And then small businesses, I just teach them how to grow and and do business better and, of course, relate to others. But that's where I I teach more of the tools with, like, Constant Contact comes in and some of the other online marketing companies like Vivial and um, Infusionsoft. And there's several others that are out there that are practical hands-on tools that small businesses need. Very cool. What led you to you doing this or to this field, and how did you get started? <laughs> well, there's another subject. Um, <laughs> I actually say by the grace of God, but what I mean by that is this was by no means my original design of my business. When I started in business nine and a half, almost 10 years ago, so I'm coming up on my 10-year anniversary this year, which is probably why my world is is turning into a stronger transition and, and taking my world to a whole new level. But ten, nine and a half years ago, ten and a half years ago, when I was planning my business, I certainly didn't imagine that I would be doing what I'm doing today. In fact, I thought I would be doing executive coaching for hardcore, staunch executives who really didn't believe in all the fluff, success values, and things like that to go into transition, to go actually start doing what they were meant to do here. I didn't really believe in the whole, um, the secret, I guess, came out several years ago. And I didn't believe in all that fluff stuff, you know, um, Mm -hmm. 
if you just will it to happen, it does. I believe the harder you work, the more you focus on something, the more you could make something happen back then. And um, so just looking at my, my belief system back then is different as well. But back then, I thought I would be more coaching and consulting. I thought I would be writing books was something that was a dream of mine when I maybe retired for the second time because I did retire from my, my gaming executive position to start my business. Um, and today it evolved really just from finding an issue and wanting and having the desire to fix it. And I know that sounds crazy, but it was actually in a message that I was sitting through a seminar one day and the message came across, you know, when you walk in a room and you see something that's wrong, that's actually, they said, God telling you that it's your job to fix it. <laughs> and that message resonated with me so much because through many areas of my life, I have had those moments and I did actually think, wow, I think it's up to me to fix it. And I did. So as an executive, that was my job in, in the, that world. So in my business, I sort of realized that that was sort of my drive as well. That was the direction. That was my roadmap was every time I walked into a situation and I would analyze it and I would see what was missing or what wasn't working or what needed to be done in our community or in, a, in an atmosphere that I was in, it was something that was calling me to pay attention to it. Whether it was for me to fix or not was not really my issue. It was just something that I realized I needed to pay attention to. So that's how I came to be where I am today. But back then, I had no idea I would be doing as much speaking as I do today. I didn't know that I would be a best-selling author so soon. I um, had no idea that I would ever dream of being involved with politics because even at that time, I would show up to vote, but I didn't even understand the difference between the general and the primary and the importance of showing up at a primary. So... I can honestly say I had no idea I'd be any part of the politics, but that's where I am today. Was there a specific time where you caught the bug where you said, you know, I'm going to be an entrepreneur or I'm going to captain my own ship? Do you remember a moment in time about that? <laughs> well, I actually think that as a child, I knew that I would be in business for myself, but I didn't understand what those words meant back then. I always knew I had something big to do. I had no idea what it was or how to achieve it. Um, at that time, I don't think during that era, we really focused on a lot of that. However, when I started working, and, and this will probably make you laugh, and, and it's okay, you have my permission to laugh at me, but when I started in business as a teenager, um, I was hungry. I was a very, very driven young girl. Um, part of it was through my lifestyle. I, I saw lots of things in my young life that I didn't ever want to see again. I did a lot of things I didn't want to do again. Um, and I think for me, it created a hunger inside me to say, I just want to go find what I'm supposed to be doing. So for that purpose, I jumped into businesses that afforded me the ability to not have a glass ceiling over my head. For instance, I, my first couple of jobs that I had, um, I did telemarketing, telesales, because I was, you know, 16 years old, so you really couldn't get out into the business world. But I would do telesales, and I remember the first, my, my income was a set level. They would give me a wage, but they said, and if you book an appointment for our salesperson that goes, our outside salesperson, we'll give you an extra dollar for every appointment you set. And if that appointment closes, we'll give you $10 extra. And I was like, okay, so I'm making this amount of money, which was way less than those bonuses, by the way. And I thought, if I can make that much more per phone call that I make, one, I'm going to increase those phone calls. <laughs> and two, I'm going to make sure every one of those phone calls are effective. So I'm going to get not just an appointment out of it, but I'm going to get them to close. And then I started realizing that the salespeople weren't very good at closing. So every appointment I'd set them on, they wouldn't close the deal. So I would actually pre-close the deal on the phone with these people and make them believe they needed the product I was selling before I even sent my outside salesperson whose job it was to close the deal. 
out to the to the de- to the close the deal. So um, I just didn't want to give you all those details. You heard me struggling there for a second, but. When the salesperson would actually go out to close the deal, they would call me afterwards and be like, what in the world did you say to those people? The minute I walked in the door, they were ready to sign the contract. And I said, well, I just wanted to make sure I got that extra bonus. That's awesome. (laughs) So it was a win-win. I think so from the very beginning, I was that person who understood I could do more and I wanted those type of work atmospheres and I craved that. So every job that I took after that, even though I wasn't an entrepreneur, I was looking for JOBs that actually afforded me, one, the security and financial abilities of an entrepreneur, a business owner, and then two, the freedom to have some wiggle room in your atmosphere that you could increase the odds in your favor. So for me, I think I always knew even though I couldn't put it into real terms. I couldn't say what it really was. That's awesome. Great story. Thanks for sharing that with us. What have you found to be, when you bring these clients on or they, they seek you out, what do you find to be the most common obstacle, you know, preventing them from getting to the next level or where you take them? What are you finding to be that obstacle? For that question, I think I'd like to talk about the small businesses. And this is more of my critical thinking, so bear with me. The, the problems that most small businesses deal with is much like what I walked into when I started my small business. There are programs through the state and through self-help programs. There's also consultants. There's, there's a million different directions a small business owner can go to get the support that they need to get their business started. Some are good, many are bad, and some are outstanding. The problem that I think a small business owner deals with most in the very beginning of starting a business is understanding who they can trust. And that becomes a challenge. That's what drove me to want to do more seminars that I do and to provide the sort of path to success that they have all started on. I do my seminars that are sponsored by Constant Contact and some of the other online marketing companies that I work with. Um, I do those typically at no charge, and it's really just an open forum for businesses to come in, learn about the subjects that I'm working on. Of course, Constant Contact has me talk about their tools if need be, but when I speak to associations and such, it's just to talk about online marketing or um, social media marketing or digital tools of some kind, and it doesn't have to be um, branded by any such name of any company that's, you know, that's there or that I talk about. But when I do those moments, I feel at my best that I am serving the small business owners to the highest level that I can by just providing them truth with nothing attached to it besides what they need to know. And I really do ask a lot of questions of the room before I get started. I will find out about the organization, find out their level of knowledge in the subjects that I'm talking about before I even get started because I am there to be in service to them. So you talked about me being a service-driven leader. Most people don't even understand what that phrase means. What it means is I'm not really here to be self-serving and stand up and act like I'm somebody important. I'm not. What I am is a tool to provide knowledge to others that don't have the time to go out and do the research that I do or to go out and bring the information back like I do to some of my um, attendees. So for me, it's really just a purpose and a passion of mine to share truth to those that are attending something because those poor small businesses need help, and they need to know who they can trust. They need to know the right information right up front because if they have chosen to be in business for themselves, they're not just providing an income to their own self. They're trying to build an economic stability for everyone around them. That that creates a ripple effect in the communities. So by me helping them with truth and, and information that works and tools that work, I'm creating a really cool ripple effect that will last forever for them. It doesn't just afford their family income. It affords 
their children to have a better education, which in turn creates a better economic situation and a better quality of life for the community. It's all of the above and it all comes together. And if you build a small business up and you give them what they need, they can grow into bigger business and they can create jobs. So the answer really is that they're looking for who to trust, where to go, and what tools are most effective. And that truly is across the board um, what most of the 20,000 plus businesses I spoke to last year alone are desperately in need of. They just need some some truth and some answers and some easy buttons to get started so that they can find one thing to stand on that works. And then they can keep operating their business, stay in business permanently, and hopefully grow. Nice. Well, you're providing an excellent service. You're definitely an educator and an advocate for small business owners. Can you I share with so. us? Can you share with us, without naming names, of course, but can you describe how you've actually taken someone from A to B and how you've helped them? Hmm. Okay. Well, I have many startups that come to me, probably many thousands, <laughs> but. There's, I'll give you a generic concept because most often it really does start there. Um, I have I have so many amazing stories I could share, and we would be here for ten days and and not for a short period of time. So, typically, when I meet with someone, they come to one of my seminars or they'll meet me out in public somewhere, and it's something I say that resonates with them that they look at me and say, "Oh my gosh, I need to talk to you." Um, one example I'll give you, and he's now become a partner of mine because he actually provides something that I can't do. Well, I can, I just don't choose to. I was talking in a political setting to a group, and as we were all departing, I was talking to one of this man's clients, and they said, so what do you really do for a living? And I said, well, I really do all of this, but this is something else I do. And I was talking about the online marketing, and I said, you know, what, what, what you just asked me, similar to what you just asked me, which was, you know, what do most small businesses struggle with? And this is a company that provides services to small businesses. So he was a very wise man to ask me that question. And I said, you know, this is what I've found, which is they really have a hard time getting out there and being found. And in the marketing realm, I, I bring a lot of tools to the table that are really just easy buttons so that you can hand it to someone and they can just grab it and go and they get the training and the support that they need to instantly fire up and get going with and, you know, within an hour, they can take one of these tools that I work with and jump in and go find success. It's pretty easy. And they have full support to do it. And I said those words, and the gentleman that was across the room, for some reason, heard me say it. He, he was probably a good 30 feet away. For some reason, apparently, my voice carried. And he came over to me and said, I need to talk to you right now. You you have something I need. And I said, oh, okay. And that really is the way it starts out in most cases. For this company in specific, they were doing something completely different. They actually did startup business licensing, for instance. Um, this is what they do for their whole practice. And he said, I need to do this with my company. I said, no problem. As soon as he heard me say that I did what I did, he knew exactly where I would fit into that mold. Most times, the client, when they talk to me, before we even get into what I think we can do, the client will be talking to me. So we just have a free consult. I sit down with them and I say, just tell me a little bit about your business. If it feels right for that person and for me, we go the next direction. And, and we'll take it to the next level. But if it's not, I'll give them a bunch of free advice and send them on their way. What typically happens is they'll be telling me about issues and situations, and I'll take down notes of what we're doing, and I'll say, you need to try this, this, and this, and they'll say, great, I need you for that part of it. Or they'll say, great, I've got this person to go do it. And that's really how I start working with someone. In this a specific case, it was how to go digital with everything he was working on because he was trading time for dollars. And, you know, with most companies, as you know, Tracy, when you're trading time for dollars, there's only so many hours in a day. So your option is to either charge more to where you take away your ability to reach more people and you become more niche and more specific and you can charge a lot of money for those things. 
or you can stay candid and do some digital and do some, some additional things that you can continue reaching those that need you most, which is the small business owners who could never afford a $10,000 package or $25,000 package right at the beginning of startup, which is when they need you most. So for that purpose, um, that was one of those moments where I took the company from doing the practical hands-on programs and licensing and, and going into S-Corps and C-Corps and deciding what's going to work and then consulting with them in a hardcore practice to here, you're going to go online. I did the exact same thing just a couple of years ago with um, radio station. It's been a while now, but I had a radio station client that I was actually working with them on emotional intelligence, and I had been working with them for about a year going in as their executive coach and working with them on emotional intelligence and sales programs and, and things like that. And it was during the, the era where everybody was threatening, oh, radio's dead because all these different things have come out. I can tell you still to this day, many years later, radio's not dead and it'll still be around. Um, it's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. But they were looking at going um, on air to trying to do things to monetize an online program. They had no idea what to do, but they knew that that was something I did. So the owner of the radio stations came to me and said, I have seven radio stations and there are, you know, four of them are the top radio stations in their, in their broadcasting. And so I want you to work with us as an executive coach and help us get our sales up. And I said, great, we can do that. And as I was working with them for the year, they knew I did the digital work as well. And he started asking me questions after each of my seminars that I would do with the whole group. So um, we would sit down and have conversations and he would pick my brain and he would try to implement things and he kept running into walls. So he would come back to me and ask more questions and I would laugh and give him some advice. Finally, about 11 months into it, he said, I just need to hire you because I think that you have the knowledge that I need to take our companies from just on the air to online and amplify our income. And I said, oh, absolutely. And I've got some ideas. So that's really how it started. And then the moment that we implemented it, we took, um, this will give you a fun example. I'm not using names on purpose, but I took the company, um, their top radio station was the number one in all of the states. So it was a, it was a great big station and they were rocking. Their advertising was way more expensive than anybody else's. The thing with me about traditional advertising is you can't validate it. There's no way to measure. You know, you used to be able to say, well, we're going to reach 100,000 people 25 times this month by this radio ad, but we could, you couldn't prove that you brought those clients to the table for your advertising clients. And so I loved the ability to take them from on air where you couldn't justify or validate your pricing to bringing it to an online trackable measurement. And we did that overnight within a month. We had brought in a couple of different programs that we were able to justify, not just from the website um, attendees, people that were showing up to the website. They were, at that point, all seven radio stations. And I told you four of them were top. All seven of them were getting about 100,000 hits per month. It wasn't a lot back then. To one station had 480 Um, unique visit to their website that next month. So within 30 days, we had already blown the number so far out that they were, they were mesmerized by it and said, okay, add the rest, do all the rest. And so we did. So that was one of the fun projects that I've done as well. And these pretty big projects. And um, I, I do that for small businesses too, not just great big companies, but little tiny businesses that I'm just super passionate about. We'll find additional ways to make money for them. We'll find additional ways to digitize some of the work that they're doing so that they don't have to spend as much money and we can track their measurements a little bit better. Perfect. What would you find to be, or what would be your best piece of advice to a small business owner or a solopreneur, you know, who's considering they're trying to get away from traditional advertising or, you know, they're not getting the results that they need to get? What would be your best piece of advice? The best piece of advice that I can give a small business owner, uh, there's two. One is that they're not getting what they think they should be getting they need to sit down with some experts and talk about what's realistic. It's hard to find experts like that that don't have some kind of paycheck attached to it. So in most communities across the nation, I am an SBDC advisor for a specific region here um, in the U.S., but 
I would say to go sit down with experts that actually know what they're doing, that don't have any skin in the game to give them the expectations that they think they should be getting. And they can get some real answers from them. So if they go to the Small Business Development Center, the SBA loans um, kind of funds a program called SBDC, typically they're at colleges or at chambers, et cetera, across the nation. Those people are paid to consult a small business owner at no cost which is fantastic, and help them get real on what their expectations are and get real on their messages. So I guess in one part, it's get real with your messages, get real with your expectations. And then they can sort of fine-tune what they need to do from there. The other is if they're not getting results from the work that they're doing, they either A, don't know how to measure it, or B, they haven't quite figured out this whole business development thing in the first place. And then they can sit down, um, take a look at their tools that they're looking at. You know, online, Facebook, LinkedIn, all those different social media sites all have measurements. Your email marketing has measurements. Your website has measurements. All of that has a measurement. If you look at the messages that you put out and you see that you got really strong traction from a specific message, then you know that that's the right message that your audience, your actual niche clients are looking for. That's where you need to be focusing because, see, at the end of the day, we all think we know what's going to work for whatever we're doing, and we think we have an idea of what most people want. But the truth is your clients and your community will tell you what they really need and what they really want if you just ask more questions. So my second part of the advice is ask a lot of questions, whether it's through a survey or it's asking a verbal question and really being open to the answers. Every small business owner should be asking more questions than they are going around telling people or chasing their tail trying to figure out. Yeah, it can be a daunting experience for a business owner and an entrepreneur, especially when they got their head down trying to run their business and, you know, all this other stuff that they need to be doing. Somebody needs to be coaching them along. Right. What plumber wants to go out and try to figure out what marketing works, you know? (laughs) Exactly. So congratulations on your recent publishing with Jack Canfield. Tell us a little bit about that. That's awesome. No, that was a gift. It was fantastic. So I was just having this conversation with um, with one of my other mentors, and the Jack Canfield subject is really cool to me. It, it's very, very deep in my heart. Um, when I first met Jack Canfield, I was 19 years old. You heard really? me say I was a hungry, hungry teenager. I I wanted a different life. I wanted to take my life to that next level as fast as I could. (laughs) So I jumped into all kinds of crazy things. But I met Jack Canfield when I was 19. Um, I was mesmerized by him then. He had a lot of great materials. And don't you laugh, Tracy, but I actually, when I met him, he was selling cassette sets. (laughs) Yep, absolutely. (laughs) So I bought every one of his cassette te- uh, sets that they had. And, and back then they were expensive, mm-hmm. but I spent, you know, I bought the farm and, and I bought it all. And um, I continued to buy stuff from him for years. He was a nobody back then. He was not mm-hmm. Jack Canfield. He was a guy that came into, and, and again, I told you, you're welcome to laugh at me or with me anytime you want, because that's what life is about. But I, um, I, at the time I was working, and I can throw names out at this time, but at the time I was 19, I was going to college. I was working as an inside account executive for AT&T business phone system. And I did a home-based business, which I won't use the name of, but it was a horrible situation for me because it ended up costing me uh, $25,000 to be in this home-based business. And it took me for everything I had for my college education to start. So that wasn't a good situation, but I met him there. So, you know, every bad situation, something really cool comes out of it. Mm-hmm. That was that for me. Jack Canfield was my golden goose egg out of that, all of that. And I can tell you it's afforded me more money 20 something years later, <laughs> but, but it wasn't such a good deal back then. Um, but I met him through that atmosphere. You know, the nice thing about home-based businesses, and, and I've become a fan, which I, I wasn't for 20 years. I hated the industry as a whole. But I've become a fan of the industry because 
over the years, I learned that they really do push people to professional success, professional development, personal development tools that I always thought were awesome. I just avoided that whole industry. So um, I think it's a great industry. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking it. But that's where I met him. And I always bought his stuff. I always followed him. You know, over the years, I watched him grow into somebody who was like an icon, which is great. Um, you know, many years later, the Chicken Soup for the Soul series came out. And, of course, him and Mark Victor Hansen wrote all of those. And I became a big fan. And I bought many of those books and gave them out to friends. So it was great, but I never saw him again. So it wasn't like, you know, I became close to him or any of that. Um, it wasn't until about... Four years ago, I met one of my newfound mentors. Um, if you read my chapter in The Road to Success, you'll actually see that I talk a lot about mentors in your life. I can't tell you how critical mentors are, which is part of why I mentioned the SBDC and then go find experts that do things that you need to hear. They can be mentors to you. Um, the, the mentor part of it, I met this amazing man who introduced me to another amazing man. Um, Doug Damon was the man who introduced me to Dr. Tom Hill. Dr. Tom Hill had written Chicken Soup for the Entrepreneur's Soul with Jack Canfield. And when he mentioned that to me, my ears perked up, of course, because I remember the fond memories of meeting him myself. And we had this great conversation about it. And he was like, yeah, it was really great. What a great experience. It was really awesome. I got to write one chapter. I went, ooh, that sounds awesome. Who has time to write a whole book and go out and market and advertise for a whole book right away? So for me, I went, oh, gosh, that sounds fantastic. Soon, I'm going to talk to you about that. And I left it there. And about two years later, it circled back around, two and a half years later, it circled back around to me that the message came that Jack was writing another book or that another book was coming out with Jack Canfield and I might have an opportunity to do something with it. So I sent an email to my fabulous, amazing, wonderful mentors and I said, hey guys, you know, I've, I've reached out to them many times since then. I have no problem and they, they know many of my deep, dark secrets and fears. And I said, hey, I need your help. I haven't asked them for anything up until this point. So I said, I need your help. Um, would you do me a favor and give me a, a good word to be able to get into this book? And I was getting ready to do a seminar in Sacramento, California. I'm going to get choked up over it, but it was kind of cool. I, um, I was getting ready to do a seminar for businesses. It was a small business seminar um, at the Metro Chamber there in Sacramento, and it's downtown. If you've ever been there, it's kind of a cool atmosphere. It's right next mm-hmm. to the old stack. So it was kind of, you know, it's one of my favorite places to be in. I showed up, and I was getting ready to walk in. And, you know, I'm getting ready to get serious and help all these small businesses. And I had a room full of people. And I um, I sent the email early that morning at like 4 o'clock in the morning. And they're on East Coast time and I'm on West Coast time. And so I, I thought, oh, before I start this seminar, I want to check my email just to see if he responded. And I opened up my email and I got, and I'm not very emotional when it, it's like the teary-eyed stuff, but I got teary-eyed and super choked up because the only thing that man said to me, I sent an email to both of them and, and um, Dr. Hill responded and said, done. That was all he said to me. (laughs) (laughs) So I got emotional. I was like, Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's going to be, this is a done deal. It's going to happen. Like this stuff is going down. And I shared it with everyone in the room. So it was just one of those moments. It was very exciting to me to, to do this book to, and I knew it was done. I knew that his recommendation and putting the energy into it was just a done deal. It was going to happen. So at that moment, I knew it was going to happen. And that's how it really came to fruition. I'm pretty sure he sent an email over and said, hey, Jack, you want to check this girl out? She's kind of fun. Um, she's goofy. She's quirky. But she really knows her stuff. And she really has a passion for wanting to help um, help the world get better and you know spread happiness and spread the ripple effect of positive, effective things happening. And so I'm pretty sure he did that. Since he said it was done, I'm, I'm confident that I can trust his word. And at that moment, that's when it all came together. So after that, about a couple weeks later, I got contacted by the company. And they said, hey, by the way, congratulations, you're in. So it all just started rolling from there. And they made it very seamless, very easy. Um, much like the way I met you, it was from somebody else that I affected in a positive way who sent me a quirky little email in the middle of the morning. I love my early mornings. Um, I, I learned at an early age that saying the early bird gets the worm. So I tend to get up really, really early in the morning, and I love to watch the sun come up. 
So I got an email early in the morning from somebody in a different time zone from me who said, hey, you need to meet Tracy. So um, T. Allen Haynes is this really awesome guy. Here's his information. Here's his background. You need to talk to him. And that's how it came about. So I'm always open to opportunities and to really cool things to happen to me. I'm very discerning because lots of things are sent to you on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. But when you know it's right and you just focus on that energy, it just becomes what you're supposed to do. So um, that's how I met you. I love it. That (laughs) that takes us into your next your next amazing accomplishment that you've been selected to speak at U Mission Critical at Space Center NASA that we're hosting. So congratulations on that. We're excited to have you. Thank you. I can't tell you. I'm so excited about that. NASA means a lot to me. There's a whole story about that also on the science and and history nut. (laughs) So when I, when, the day you and I talked, you know that that I was busy being busy that day, and I kept calling you in between meetings and and support. And when you finally said NASA, I I almost dropped the phone just because (laughs) I was already impressed by you when it was recommended to me to talk to you. But then you had so much patience with me that day to get the message out to me to make me even understand what we were trying to do and that the opportunity was there. And I was really, really honored that, um, one, when you finally said that, I was honored that you took the time and the patience to talk to me all day long at several different phone calls. And then even more than that, just the opportunity of doing this with you and now looking at the lineup that we have, how cool is that? We have some pretty amazing people about to do this event with us. So I feel like, you know, that little girl inside me still exists probably more than the analytical executive that I used to be. And I can tell you, I really focus on her. And that little girl said, oh, my goodness, I get to play in this this playground with these guys? Wow, how cool is that? (laughs) So um, so I'm very excited about it. So thank you for the opportunity. And I am really, really beyond honored to to work with you. I think this is awesome. Well, we're super excited to have you. And you you fit you fit the premise exactly about, you know, you mission critical and you are definitely on a mission to help small businesses uh, be successful. So that's awesome. So how can people find out more about you if they want some more information? Well, I have a couple of different ways that they can reach out to me. Um, First and foremost, my website is ask Jen Baker at and, and that's, you know, the easiest way to, to reach out to me. I would imagine I'm, I have a contact form on there. They are always welcome to reach me also at my other website, which is theroadtosuccess.com. Imagine that. That's the book that we just wrote that's a bestseller with Jack Canfield. And um, I'm always available. That You know, you can find me on social media. You can find me on LinkedIn. Um, it's Jennifer Baker. My, my real name is Jennifer, but my branding team couldn't do Jennifer Baker because is way too common, so they thought it would be fun to do Jen Baker. So here I am. Um, so askjenbaker.com is the easiest way, but you can find me at Jennifer Baker at any of my other social media sites because that really is my name. Awesome. Well, it was a pleasure having you on the show. We look forward to seeing your amazing self at U Mission Critical NASA at Houston in January. That's the 29th, 30th, and 31st with a VIP night on the 29th. The link to the event will be in the comments section. So thank you again, Jennifer. It's a great show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. There you have it for this edition of the show. We'll see you the next time. Thanks for listening to The Authority Syndicate with T. Allen Haynes, the show for positioning yourself as the number one authority in your industry, quickly turning your prospects into clients and raving fans. We'll see you next time on The Authority Syndicate. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.